thought you'd like a look out the window. Yes, we will get to the pens briefly. We're under a pretty good storm out here. It's a nor'easter. Throwing down some uh, nice snow. Not sticking every place because it is close to freezing. So here are our bird feeders, which are getting a pretty good workout today. Not as much as usual. Maybe a lot of birds are hunkered down because of the weather. It is sticking in a few spots. We shouldn't have more than a couple inches when this thing is finished, which is about eight or nine hours from now. Back to the pens. Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thankfully, I'm indoors and it's dry and warm. This is a pen a couple people noticed in my uh, test tube pen rack, the Keiko Sky. It's a Chinese pen. Keiko is a stationery store that's known for doing some uh, interesting things. Here's their website. This pen certainly catches everybody's eye who's seen it. A nice F for fine point there at the bottom. And it, the material doesn't exactly strike you what it is right in the beginning, but it's Macrolon. Supposedly the same material that's used for the Lamy 2000, and we'll compare that a little bit later. The clip is molded in place, so it's, some people consider this not a very functional clip. My thanks go to Frank Underwater, who uh, lent me this pen for the review, and he's done an excellent review on his blog. The link will be in the description. Just a pull-off cap, and we get an interesting section. It has some uh, sculpturing to it to kind of uh, get your hands in the right position. It fits well in the hand. This pen has almost no weight to it. It'll give you those weights. It posts fine, you know, so you don't even notice the cap on the pen one way or the other. It's a nice black German nib, which is one of the things that Keiko is known for, is putting on uh, good nibs. You got your classic feed there at the back. I think this is a Schmidt nib. We'll confirm that. And it is, says German, extra fine, and that looks like the Keiko logo there on it. So the F at the end was a little bit misleading because it's really an EF. The other thing is, is you have this uh, little design here at the end of the section, which matches into this cap that's inside, the cap liner that's inside the cap, kind of like your Lamy Safaris have. So that makes it very secure, and the nib does not dry out. So the material just feels nice in the hand. Macrolon is a trademark name for polycarbonates made by a German company, Covesto. So they make 127 variations of Macrolon. And one of them does have fiber glass filler, 15%, which is what we always thought, at least I always thought was part of the special feel and properties of the Lamy 2000. So let's look at these together. This feels a little bit smoother. Obviously it has some type I think of coating on it. Whereas this is just a Macrolon probably with a nice dark pigment in there and the glass fibers that just give it a nice feel. And I think it's it's attempt to give you that hard rubber ebonite feel that a lot of people like in pens, but obviously in an injection molded plastic makes it uh, less expensive to produce. Also, you can have extreme consistent tolerances and other things that a lot of people like. And when you compare it to another injection molded pen, which is probably PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate, this has a smoother feeling to it, almost like an oily feeling where this doesn't. So I think that's one of the advantages or certainly differentiates this pen from other pens. Look at this material a little bit closer. I brought out my trusty LED, which I'm kind of using like an x-ray. 
And I don't know whether the camera's picking it up, but there is definitely some filler material in there. You can see those, hopefully you can see those dark splotches in amongst uh, this material. So it's um, definitely has an interesting feel to it. You can see that light transmits at the top of the finial. It's a little bit thicker section here surrounding the clip, which hopefully that is good for stability. But the real key is, how does it write? So let's take a look at that in a minute. But this section just unscrews and it clicks into place, so that's really nice. It's cartridge fill. These are, it gives you two. So these are standard international shorts, so there's no reason why we couldn't fit a converter in there. But I got the pen with this cartridge in it and it writes fine, so I have no intention of changing it. And I like the aesthetics. It clicks into place at the very end, so you know it's secure. I um, wouldn't really call it anything transparent. It's interesting to see that metal piece there, which I guess adds stability to the pen. So the pen, I think, is made to last a while, even though it is sold uh, and uh, <clears throat> as a student pen. The other thing that Frank talks about in his blog is he got this uh, from... Pen World Magazine. Apparently, their uh, Keiko worked out a deal with them to give away this pen with a subscription at pen shows, and he got it to Philly's show earlier this year. So I'm happy that he did that. Uh, I wasn't at the Philly show, so uh, glad he did that. So that's uh, the origin of the pen. There may be ways to buy it, but it's certainly not available on eBay or through any of the normal channels that I use. So we'll just take a look at the pen and uh, see if uh, my viewers can add more information about how you might be able to buy it. So one of the things that the kind of nice is to compare this student pen to other German student pens. So here's a Caveco Perkio, which I got to do a review on. I just like the color combination. It's interesting to see Caveco take a format and, and make it bigger. And this also feels nice, pop-off cap. This has a more sculpted section here with the three places to put your fingers also has an interesting black nib and that same type of mechanism to seal it with the cap liner when you cap the pen this is another pen is pending review this is an online pen uh, courtesy of a gold spot pens and if we pop this off we also see a black nib so gee isn't there an interesting similarity here and also the same type of uh, system here to secure that posting of the cap and providing a nice airtight seal to the nib. So we mentioned before ergonomically the pen is, is about as good as you can get. Fits well without being posted. Posting works fine, secure. I'd probably write with this posted just so I knew where the cap was and that off from getting lost. I mean, this is a consistent, smooth writer. No effort. So it's nice. You know, I'd put it up against the Lamy or the Caveco nibs that are of a similar vein of these interesting uh, school-like pens. There, you know, there's always concern about a, a black nib with wear and plating, and from my experience, also certain inks are gonna have some uh, could affect that coating. You know, the coating's also um, on the end of the nib there, so there's a question of wear. I'm probably not going to be able to use this pen long enough to actually see if that's going to happen, but out of the box, it's it's fine. You know, you don't have to do anything with it. It just writes. Fairly wet line. Looks like your standard uh, blue ink. Yeah, it's a very blue ink. 
So overall, I like the pen. Like I said, aesthetically, it's interesting and unique. And uh, price, who knows what it'll be if it is ever available. Some people are talking about six bucks, which is yeah, a little bit pricey for this type of pen from the Chinese market, but certainly from pens in general, six dollars for a pen of this quality is uh, quite acceptable and quite reasonable. So thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed a quick look at a pen and check out Frank Underwater's blog. Uh, he does an excellent job on this pen as well as other Chinese pens, both from a modern perspective and also historical perspective. So may all of you have excellent writing experiences, explore that wonderful world of inks, pens, nibs, and paper. Until next time, bye.